Yeah, uh, I do really agree, uh, totally agree to that. We also highlighted on our right, but uh, a bit uh, forget about their responsibilities. This is a uh, current issues we are facing. So may I have a comment of what institution exists in the United States to examine uh, and address these issues from Professor? Certainly, thank you. Uh, I think these comments highlight the importance of courts. And I'll say a few words about the national courts in the United States, the federal courts in the United States. There are many different ways to structure uh, a court system. And uh, the, the federal courts in the United States choose one model. There are many other models around the world that work very, very well. But what they share in common is principles of judicial independence, judicial impartiality, and judicial neutrality. And in particular, the idea of judicial independence, the idea that the courts that are available to hear disputes, whether it's disputes between government and citizens or disputes among private citizens, need to be able to render decisions without fear that they'll be punished or that they will suffer reprisals for enforcing the principles of law. And in the United States, that independence of the federal courts, of the national courts, is secured by certain structural protections that our courts have from political influence or reprisal. And so in the United States, federal judges are appointed uh, for lifetime appointments if they, if, uh, until they choose to step down, uh, subject only to removal by an impeachment process. And it's an impeachment process that's very demanding and that in the American system has been used only in circumstances of, of criminal behavior or other uh, deep malfeasance by judges. Uh, we have a, a culture and a, and a tradition in the United States of not uh, removing judges by impeachment simply because they render unpopular decisions. And indeed, part of the recognized virtue and nobility of the profession of being a judge is a willingness to enforce constitutional principles even when doing so goes against the interests of the government, and even when doing so may be unpopular. And uh, I, I believe that when the American judiciary has been at its best, it has enforced principles according to uh, the dictates of law, even in the face of uh, very strong criticism. Now, uh, how would Myanmar go about setting up a judicial system of that kind? That is a question that Myanmar needs to answer. And as I say, the American system is one example, but certainly not the only one. But the idea that judges are playing a role that is not just serving the people by providing uh, uh, the ability to resolve disputes, which is a very important uh, mechanism in a, a complex society, but also serving a role of, of uh, holding the government accountable to the law and to the Constitution and imposing limits on the legislature and limits on the executive and limits on the military when the law and the Constitution require it. That role of the judiciary is one that I think is of central importance to the idea of the rule of law. Right? The legitimacy of government doesn't come from power. Governments are very powerful, and powerful people often ascend to positions of power in government. But the legitimacy of government comes from a commitment to a set of principles about the rights of the individual and about the political process, the, full, the, the, the fair and open political process, the free and fair political process by which government is elected. And, and that would be a definition, at least one definition, that I would offer of what rule of law means. Uh, law and order. Uh, specifically in the context of your question, I take it is referring to uh, safety and the ability of people to go about their lives 
uh, without imminent threat of harm or death, right? And it is one of the functions of government to maintain law and order, but to do so while respecting the rule of law, to do so while respecting principles of individual rights and principles of political legitimacy, which give the government the authority to act in the first place. And so I think you're, you're right to say that they're different concepts. And I would say that it is adherence to the rule of law that legitimizes the efforts of the government to maintain law and order. And that if the government does not adhere to principles of rule of law, then it compromises the legitimacy of, the, of its efforts to maintain law and order. That's how I would understand those definitions. Thank you. So the professor mentioned about the legitimacy of the government. Can I have a few comments from your excellency? In what sense about legitimacy of yeah. government? <laughs> In terms of uh, rule, and or, uh, rule and order and uh, law, and order. law and order. Well, I mean, there are many ways that governments are legitimate. Obviously, the, the democratic way is through um, fair elections and then the people that make the laws therefore represent people and the people should follow those that are, represent them. So there's a kind of a, a relationship between the people and those who govern them that provides from a democratic standpoint a fundamental legitimacy to that government. And if the government um, says it represents people but is not actually have a real connection to them, there's no evidence that they have um, been selected or that they have the will of the people at heart, then there are questions about legitimacy and that could create instability in the society, I think, because people may not feel that their governance is fair. Or they may say, why did they choose the way they did when that's not my will, that's not the popular will, and therefore you get people going into the streets or people being angry at, at laws. This is part of the fundamental, again, rule of law has to be not just top down but bottom up. It goes to education of your rights, but education of your responsibilities, education about what the laws say, and your responsibility to follow that law. Uh, that is a fundamental civic citizen responsibility. Thank you. So can I have a voice from Kinley on behalf of the woman community? As a generous civilian that I don't know much about the uh, legal Aspected, but the rule of law is the main title, I believe, like that, and then law, law and order is the subtitle. I, I understand like that. And also, we talk about the rule of law or different things, but uh, I'm, I have a question about the quality of the laws. Now, I feel like that in a new parliament, the, some of the parliament members are very pushy to pass the new law. Many new laws uh, you have already experienced in land laws or uh, pharma related laws, something like that. So a couple of uh, laws who are very you know, speedy uh, in the preparation, they don't take much time for the preparation and drafting and without listening to the international principles and norms. So that's why after the law passed, there, there are many uh, critics and many blames and many weaknesses we found out that. So it is good to get the rule of law and to remove and abolish the uh, unfair law. And at the same time, the quality of law must be very uh, harmony with the international norms and standards. That's why uh, some of our women groups and also civil society are trying to advocate the members of parliament to be harmony with the international standards and norms. And also, I'd like to uh, raise one question to the uh, professor about the amendment of constitution. Now we are have a big debate about the amendment that some of the very hardliner guys uh, very got angry about the, our uh, request for the amendment. They think that it is totally bad for them. But in the United States I have overheard that there are several uh, attempts to try to amend the constitution. So let me know about how many times you did, uh, did amend the Constitution and how many years it would take to amend like very simple and very thin books of Constitution that is really great for us to learn from the American Constitution book. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. 